You're watching Sun TV, broadcasting to the world from studios in Providenciales, in the beautiful by Nature Turks and Caicos Islands. Sun TV, your source for real news as it happens. I'm Tadlene Dafferlin and thanks for watching this edition of Sun TV News. In our headlines today, a new translation system is introduced at the hospital to help medical officials deal with persons who speak foreign languages and the community college fund launches its scholarship program. Life moves fast. It's extraordinary what you can see when you take a second look. Capture the extraordinary around you with Digicel's 4G mobile internet. Share the moment instantly with our super fast speeds on your mobile device. The internet as it was meant to be. Only with Digicel 4G. Digicel. Be extraordinary. With the Turks and Caicos Islands being home to persons who speak many different languages, the two hospitals in Grand Turk and Providenciales are introducing a translation system to help doctors and nurses communicate with patients. During an interview with Sun TV, Mr. Bruce Linkletter, country manager for the company called Language Line Solutions, gave us some information on the interpretation services that was implemented at InterHealth Canada Hospital last week. With the system being implemented just last week, Mr. Linkletter said that it will be a great relief for the patients because now they will be better able to tell the doctors and nurses what their situations are. He said there is a need for this service in the Turks and Caicos Islands. Language Line is an organization that actually founded an industry called Over the Phone Interpretation 33 years ago by a police officer. And what we do is we specialize in offering interpretation services in over 200 languages over the telephone. We do this approximately 22 million times a year. And how it works is basically when a business, a hospital, could be an insurance company, could be a bank, could be a police department, and they're dealing with individuals who have limited English speaking skills and require assistance to get an interpretation. The client's phone language line, they dial a 1-800 number, request any of the 200 languages that we support, and we have a pro professionally trained interpreter on the telephone to support them within anywhere from 20 to uh, 60 seconds. We're actually uh, working with the hospital where the hospital has access to our service now. And what it is, we, we provide medically trained interpreters over the telephone. So there's a need in the Turks and Caicos, a specific need initially was Spanish and Haitian Creole, where there's a number of situations where patients come to the hospital and do not speak English. So to communicate with them, it has been a challenge from the hospital to try to find an internal resource who can speak the language uh, and try to do the interpretation. However, the advantages are now that they will be able to dial a 1-800 number, provide us with the code that the hospital has been provided, and we'll get them a professionally trained interpreter over the telephone in Haitian, Haitian Creole, Spanish, and any other 200 languages that are required. Mr. Linkletter also told us when the system was implemented and what we can expect from it. He said the interpreters that they are providing to the hospital are actually medically qualified and are familiar with medical terminology. The system really was just implemented actually starting this week. Prior to that, I had, uh, we had provided to the hospital the opportunity to look at using the service on a demonstration level basis. Uh, which they, they did and decided that they could use the service. The difference between the demonstration level and the service provided today is that the interpreters that we're providing to the hospital are actually medically qualified and so they're familiar with medical terminology which reduces the amount of time uh, required by the doctors and the nurses to interface with the interpreter as well as provides a much more accurate interpretation of what the patient's needs are. Mr. Linkletter said one of the reasons why the hospital liked to use interpreters is because it cuts down on the amount of time to determine what the situation is. It's a great relief for the patient too because the patient comes in 
he or she has a problem or perhaps with their child, they're really trying to explain the situation. It's important that the right diagnosis be given. And in fact, many of the reasons, one of the reasons why hospitals and medical people like to use the interpreters is that it really cuts the amount of time required and the amount of tests required to determine what the situation is. So you could have someone who comes into a hospital clutching their chest, who speaks no English at all, and the hospital then is almost forced to provide a number of tests that could be expensive, perhaps bypassing people that are in the queue who may need more urgent help, but it appears that this individual, he or she, might be having a heart attack. In reality, if they could communicate the situation, the doctor or the nurse may be able to determine that it's of a lesser, uh, a lesser emergency and can treat them differently, saving time, money, as well as the length of hospital stays. We now bring you some clips of the demonstration of Spanish translation and Haitian Creole translation. All right, what I'm going to do now is do a demonstration as to how the, exactly how the service works. It simply is dialing a number. In this case, the system will prompt us, ask us for the code that's associated with the hospital, then we'll press one for Spanish, two for Haitian Creole, and we'll get a professionally trained interpreter on the phone. Hello, my name is John. And we have a client here, and we're just actually doing a demonstration. I wonder if you could ask my client in Spanish, how do you like the service? Yes, can you see, can you ask her, can you see, it will it be helpful in a medical emergency? Um, you're asking if I could be of uh, help or if you can be of help. Does she see the service as being helpful in an emergency? Okay, sí, claro que sí. Okay, thank you very much for your time. My customer is with me. Can you ask her how is she doing today? You're watching Sun TV, broadcasting to the world from studios in Providenciales in the beautiful by nature Turks and Caicos Islands. Sun TV, your source for real news as it happens. On Wednesday, April 30th, members of the community college launched their scholarship program. Students who are accepted will have to maintain a grade point average of 2.75 to remain with their scholarships. This scholarship program will give the less fortunate student the opportunity to study at the community college and further their education. Mrs. Claudette Clare, chairperson of the foundation, said that 12 scholarships will be given out to students combining a mix of full and partial. Today represents not, a, not the culmination of our work because our main work as, as the foundation is fundraising, but it marks a significant milestone in that we are able to officially launch the scholarship program. Now, the funds that we have been raising from our, September, from our November fundraiser and all the other little fundraising initiatives, we are now able to say, well, okay, those funds are going to be, uh, are ready to be tapped into. And we launched this program with a scholarship policy handbook. This handbook is like a quick guide to what is required 
for anyone to tap into the scholarship. Now, it, there's a mission and there's a vision. I'd like to share the vision with the public. The TCICC Foundation will be recognized as the premier fundraising organization for the TCICC, for the college. All right, so we are the main, main fundraising um, arm of the college. Ms. Claire also outlined the criteria points to be eligible for a scholarship. How, how do you become eligible? What are you going to be awarded? You might be awarded a full scholarship or a partial scholarship. Let me say that a full scholarship um, would, be, would cover the cost of tuition and $200 in books. A partial scholarship would give you just cover the cost of, of tuition. Now, grants are going to be given out. We are not too sure how many. Now, let us deal with eligibility. High school graduates who have completed secondary education are the, you know, our focal point. And students who have at least four CSEC or IGCSE subjects. Two at general two or equivalent B grade or higher. And two at the general a general three or equivalent C grade or higher. Students whose area of study falls within the priority, priority areas as outlined by government. Students must have evidence of acceptance from the Turks and Caicos Islands Community College. Obviously, um, a letter, you know, saying that you have been given a place at the college. Students must produce evidence of legal status. This is important, evidence of legal status. So these are some of the, um, the, the, the criteria points for eligibility. Mr. Deverell Malcolm, member of the College Foundation and designer of the forms, explain where these forms can be found. We spent some time putting these policies together to make sure that we have a, a fair and transparent uh, document that allows everyone um, residing in the country of a, of a legal status to be given an opportunity at a scholarship. Um, we put the forms in, uh, well I designed these forms uh, that we will put out there into the public domain so people can now start to apply for scholarships. We also are going to put the forms on the TCICC website along with this document as well so students can visit the site and be able to download the form or the application and apply for the grants or scholarships. Kino Forbes, another member of the foundation, said that minimum grade will help to give students a fair chance. Here's what he had to say. Remember, that's the minimum qualification. It is. Uh, it's mm -hmm. minimum. So yeah. that's the lowest grades that we will accept. So, um, so we're not necessarily setting the bar low or anything, but that it's the minimum grades because Really, we want to give everyone a fair shot, a fair opportunity to to advance themselves. But I believe that we're going to have students um, with with excellent, I mean, results um, applying for scholarships just based on the the economy right now and children's desire to to go off to school. So that's just a minimum. That's you know. So we have to remember that. Former Deputy Premier and Minister of Education, Mrs. Lillian Boyce, who is also a member of the foundation, said with reminding everyone they will receive every last check. Here's what she had to say. When some of the people pledge them, they say they will pay them by the term, by the school semester. And so the first one would be in September. I honestly believe that we will collect I every last, last I hope, I hope every so. last one of them. Mm -hmm. I remind them. them. Mm -hmm. Principal of the community college, Mr. Samuel Forbes, said he is optimistic that many young people will make good use of these scholarship opportunities. I'm just as excited as, as Mrs. Clear because I'm realizing that we're making available uh, uh, education to Knowing that this, this scholarship fund is available, uh, quite a few persons are going to tap into it. And uh, 
they will not be the sign and learn that, hey, I'm back to my past, but I don't have no, no, no resources to go to the, to, to the college. But if I can apply and my chances of getting college are greater now. So I'm all excited because of the whole thing that it makes available. And it, it, it speaks to the mission of the, 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 the foundation that is assisting in, in the development of our, our young people especially. Well, that's our Sun TV news brief for today. Join us again tomorrow when we bring you real news as it happens directly to your computer, mobile device, or smartphone. If you know anyone living overseas who would like to keep up with what is happening in the Turks and Caicos Islands, get them to email us at sun at suntci.com so we can add them to our mailing list to get Sun TV news. Thanks for watching. I'm Tadine Dafferlin.